Okay, I'll call this meeting to order for June the 1st, 2021. Resolved that the agenda for the June 1st, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Friesen. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Welcome everybody here tonight. We have quite a group in here, probably the most we've had in here since the beginning of COVID. So uh, we do welcome everybody here. So I'm sorry, I just said welcome to everybody here in the room tonight. Yeah, you need to be louder. Okay, I will. <clears throat> My apologies. Not used to having so many people in the room. So uh, we do have one member of council attending by uh, Zoom tonight. Uh, Deputy Mayor Wintoni is absent as well as Councillor White. Resolved the minutes of the May 18, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Number four on our agenda is uh, we have uh, reception delegations and for our public hearing, 4.1. Result of the regular meeting of council be suspended and further the public hearing for conditional use 2000 or sorry conditional use 1 2021 be called to order at 7 30 p.m. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. All in favor? It's carried. I call the meeting to order conditional use application number one, 2021. The purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use to allow a retail business in RS5 zone. The requirements of uh, section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. I request that any person making representation to the hearing, state their name, civic address, and their civic address. That's either opposed or in favor. So this is your opportunity if you're here to speak to or for to come forward. Go ahead. Well, I never been to you just stand Yeah, you can just come to the chair. And uh, just state your name and your address. Dan Bartel, 220 Dixie Road, Okay, you be seated. You don't it. have to stand. Okay, I oppose it. Okay, so if you want to give any reason what you are opposed to, or that's all your statement is. Well, we have a... I'm you a, can remove your mask. I'm against any type of retail business in that location or in that end of town. As we have a good neighborhood, we have a lot of traffic now with the soccer fields there and um, another business, it's a lot more traffic, and we don't know what that business can bring in the future. Once we open the door to any type of retail, it could be hot shop, who knows what, right? Like, it's a residential area, it'd be nice to keep it a residential area. Okay. Anything further? Um, no, I think that's it. Do I have, do I have a chance to speak later? Uh, no, once we close the hearing, then it's, it's done. Okay, so I, I post it then, that's it. Okay, Thank you. take a note. Thank you. Anybody else? Go ahead. Um, Gloria Floyd, 225 Dixie Road. I'm opposed. Um, simply because I, I know that practice sets precedence, therefore, if we allow a retail business in that church, then going forward in the future, it means that anywhere down our street can be a retail business. I have concerns because, um, as Dan had said, he's a neighbor, and um, as he has stated, that road is, has become a speedway. Um, I have young grandchildren that I take care of. We can't go out on that street to ride bikes on, maybe at 10 o'clock in the morning, that's called the Berlin window. Um, the traffic on that street is something else. I'm concerned that it will increase the traffic flow. Um, not only that I'm, uh, 
I have no problem with anybody starting a business in the other area. This is a residential area. I'd like to keep it as a residential area. Um, just that it's busy enough and um, there will be that will add to the traffic, that will add to the noise, and that's what I'd like to keep this. Thank you. Anyone else? One more call. Okay, go ahead. <clears throat> Marion Fury, two hundred sixty Road. Okay. I. Um, you can speak. You can sit down. You don't have to stand. Okay. Uh, I never knew one of these before, and I. I must say, I don't know. Um, I, I'm not opposed to the business that wants to go in there. My question is right now. If they all of a sudden quit or whatever, do the people that live in that area have any say or do we have another meeting like this or anything like that? Or once it becomes a retail business, that's it forever? The, the conditional use would be on this property. So technically, if we allow this uh, uh, retail in this R5 zone on this property, yes, it would continue with that. So they could hire or they could sell it to whoever they liked and we would have no chance to oppose it or? Uh, as far as I know, I believe we're on this Council property. Council Do we not have the ability to put the condition on that it's only for this owner? Yes, for Council this, can. This we could put conditions on, yes this property that is only for this owner and only for uh, this particular business. If the business were to change in any substantial way, it would be, it would violate, if we could make that a condition of the property. That's correct. If it's outright approved, then it, it is ongoing. The council can put any conditions they like. They can? Yes. Anything further? Well, I uh, I guess I'm then opposed to a retail business going there because I think we would, well, for the reasons that have been stated, I agree. There's uh, so much traffic there that I babysit a little dog and I don't let him on the front next to him because he'd be killed. And uh, this is too much fast traffic there anymore. Okay, thank you. Any further? Go ahead. My name is uh, Robert Lewis. I live in the RM Swan River, Southwest 128.34. We are the owners, or technically, I'm the pastor of the people who own the property. Um, we've had it up for sale for over a year. Uh, we've had um, uh, gyms, uh, people who like to put gyms in. Uh, we've had uh, at least two people, two different uh, groups. We've had people ask about uh, multi-use uh, housing uh, on the, that property. The people who own it, will eventually would like to sell it. And I know that it's one of those awkward moments to come forward and, and uh, have a disagreement, but I think it's a, a balance that we're trying to find. I mean, we ourselves are, are trying to figure out the best way to sell this for the community. And so we've had discussions about when people approach us how do you think this would work? How do you think this one would work? And, and so we have listened to a few of these uh, ideas that people have come to us with. One of the things that we do like about the, um, the idea that has been presented uh, by the people who are uh, requesting a, a, a conditional is that uh, while it is what we call retail, it's not a Walmart, it's not true value. 
we've had uh, massage people now uh, past there um, having business, and so there has been business because of uh, massage therapists, I know for sure. So I went to one who lived there. So what we were trying to do was find a way uh, where we know that over time the building will start to degrade um, if it stays vacant. So what we wanted to do is try to sell it as expedient as possible, but mindful of the community around it. And so we thought that this was a uh, sort of a balance between the people who own it and the neighbors around it. Uh, I think perhaps it might reduce the uh, well, when I, was, when I was there in my office, now I'm over at St. James, uh, I know, would notice on a regular basis uh, the loop, uh, the, the cruisers would come down and that was their spot to, to cruise back and head back town, uh, back into Main Street. And I thought, well, it is possible that uh, with a regular presence, that might even be reduced because those people are really the people you don't want to be driving up and down the street uh, with a heavy foot. And so, again, we were kind of putting this all together in, in our decision-making process. And that's why we thought that this was a, a good fit for the community. Because I, we thought that it would be a, a balance between uh, options that were, we saw as higher volume um, as a, and uh, maybe the other options which were more occupancies. And this one seemed to be the one that kind of struck the best balance with the least amount of traffic, um, selling of our place, and a community um, that would, would embrace uh, the uniqueness of the, this business. So that's how we kind of went forward. So to kind of break it down for everybody here, as you see what we were trying to do. And it, and it does put us in an awkward spot, because we know what's going on. You know, relief, and that was a difficult part too. And it wasn't easy for a lot of the people who owned it because that was their place for since the seventies. So that's sort of where we are. So that gives you a sense of how we came to this point for us as Trinity Lutheran Church. And so I, I speak on behalf of the people um, who are trying to, to find a way to sell it um, in a way that strikes a balance with the community and somebody who would like to use the building for the benefit of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Corinne Malachi. I live here in Stone River. Um, I'm actually uh, a teacher also at E. Cole uh, uh, School, and uh, we are individuals, me and my husband, we're a family-based business. We are the people interested in purchasing the building. Um, first of all, I really believe it will be a benefit to the community and the neighborhood. Um, we will be operating regular hours, I mean nine to five, regular business hours. Um, after that, when we shut down at five, everybody goes home. So I think that will reduce traffic in the area in the evening. Um, what we're Opening up um, certainly draws people from out of town into the area um, because we are manufacturers. We, the space, first of all, why we chose that space, the church, is because it's big enough for all of our sewing machines, um, our big quilting machine, so we'll be selling fabric. Um, and of course, uh, all the machines required to make our TVs, um, and we ship those across Canada um, right now. Um, we, we're slowly getting into the states. Um, but first of all, we're bringing jobs into the community, especially during a pandemic. Right now I have three ladies sewing in the front. We're at a present location. And my husband has three guys sewing in the back with him. So we provided more employment during a pandemic right now, which is a benefit to the community. Um, and as well, people come from out of town to take in our art, the art that we sell, the, all our products are indigenous themed um, and uh, indigenous made. Our pro products are also made here in Canada, which is a real benefit. Um, and people come from out of town uh, to buy our products or just look at our stuff. And when they do that, 
they buy gas here in the community, they go to the restaurants, it fuels the economy. Like we're, we're supporting Swan River. Like it's a, a good thing to draw tourism. And because we can't really um, say for certain how, how much out of town stuff is gonna come in uh, because of COVID, because of the, the restrictions right now. But once our borders open up, um, I mean, a lot of people will come in there um, to buy and, and look at our stuff. And we are the only, as far as I know, um, TP and Star Blanket uh, uh, manufacturers that are 100% Indigenous owned and operated in Canada. That's how unique our business is. Um, and uh, all that is in me and my husband's heart is, uh, you know, bringing good to the world. And we have four children of our own that go to school here. Um, I mean, we're, we're family, a family-based business. Our daughter works at, at, our, at our, with, with our, with our business, at our shop, and so do our children. Um, so, I mean, and we're trying to support uh, local artisans here as well. Lo um, other people uh, were reselling their stuff as well. So, I mean, we can only get bigger and better, in my opinion. Thank you. Councilor Delorier. Um, you had mentioned that your hours were from 9 to 5. Is that Monday to Friday? Monday or to Friday, is yeah. it, Do you have any opening on Saturdays and or Sundays Saturday, or any plans right, for that? Yeah. Saturday we're at right now at noon to 5. Okay. Now. And you're closed Sundays? And closed Sundays, okay. yeah. And not open any week, evenings? Any, no, you know. Not as far as we know. But okay. we may some at some point do some um, quilting uh, workshops similar to Fabriculus, where we teach people how to sew. Um, or I might do, um, because I'm an art teacher, um, I might possibly, I'd really love to have my own art studio at some point too and have open that up uh, to whoever wants to in the community, um, art lessons and, and different things like that. That's my long-term goals. Um, but um, right now, um, I'm busy enough as it is, <laughs> so in, a, in the space we're at, it's just not big enough. We love to put our teepees out front, um, and um, lots of people just want to just look at them and look inside them, and you know they're, they're just they're really good for tourism. Yeah. Um, you know the the biggest concern I've heard tonight is regarding traffic and, and those kinds yeah. of concerns. So. Um, you mentioned you have six employees in addition to your, yourself and your yeah. husband, so eight. Do you, well, do you foresee, I guess, um, what, what would be the, the, the amount of employees that, you're, that would be the most you'd have there? Or, uh, you know. I, we want to expand. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We, our partnership is open. Like, oh, I'm John Blanger, three starters uh, in the Swan River. But um, yeah, it, as for employees, we obviously want to expand. Uh, but when we go there, it's not like people are coming and going all the time. Yes, we have a retail storefront right now. Uh, but then, like the gentleman said back here, we're not a Walmart, and the parking lot's not going to be. Fill the customers. The traffic is, you, you'll see it, but we're, we're kind of on the edge of the neighborhood there. Like, you just turn to go to Hay School there, and, and there's lots of parents coming and going all day long, kind of thing, have daycare there. It's kind of just, we're, we're just adjacent to it. So it, it, it's kind of similar traffic. Similar traffic. Yeah, because the school. But it's not like we would be bringing down the neighborhood or anything like that. But it would be something to see having uh, the teepees up and stuff like that. Ever since we opened up here, uh, everybody, every walk of life, every race has been walking through our doors and, and we're excited. We take them from the back, we show them what we do, uh, what we manufacture, how we manufacture. <coughs> And I, and I think it's a good thing. Uh, yes, there will be an increase in traffic, but uh, I, I wouldn't even think we would know 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it will not conflict with minor hockey in any way. Minor hockey runs uh, October through mid-March. This program will be offered before and after minor hockey when a lot of the AAA programs and hockey that continues on after minor hockey takes place. It provided an option for the kids and the families who have to travel out of town for the same type of skill development. And you'd be shocked how many in town do this. And it would also be new opportunities for local kids that would, they can't travel to do these, this special skill development and stuff like that. It'd be an option for them as well, for the ones that can't travel. Uh, you can stop me at any time if you have any questions. So hopefully I don't run. How long do I have? Usually 10 minutes. I'll, I'll we'll, 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 we'll let you go longer if you need. I will be longer. So in these areas, this August before the rig comes in and when the ice goes out, basically when the stamps are done, which is depending on the year, but on average, end of March basically, there's 30 to 40 kids, boys and girls, in this valley. Then they attend various hockey schools, extended season hockey, which is basically uh, regional hockey teams, which are AAA teams. Each age group has their own team in each region, and it is very, uh, it is quite, quite large around Manitoba. Anyways, for extended season games and tournaments, of these thirty to forty families. The travel for off, uh, this off-season hockey, basically, that I'm discussing, they're taking $100,000 out of this valley, and they're spending it in Brandon, Dauphin, Burden, Winnipeg, basically because the programs, one, aren't offered here, and two, the ice isn't here to do it. $100,000 is conservative. I have two boys, and I've spent I mean, a COVID year, $10,000. I am definitely not the norm. I'm a little more on the higher end of everybody. But there are 30 to 40 kids that travel all the time. And uh, we're not alone. Every community is the same. There's the same all over every region, every town. These kids are traveling and their parents are taking them. <sighs> to bring this hockey development here, it would attract the kids from out of town. It would bring some revenue to town. It's going to attract kids from the Parkland region, the north, which is huge because they don't have that kind of development. They can come here. The biggest thing is the ice. The ice has to be here in order to set this stuff up. You can't just overnight, hey, the ice is open now, and then set something up. Basically, these kids right now already know where they're going in August. They know there's no ice until the 25th of August this year. So everyone has their plans. They have their trailers packed to leave town, to go camp in Winnipeg for the week, to go to Brandon, to go to Yorkton. They're doing this every year. And there's, anyways, I've kind of lost my train of thought here. But there is demand for it. It's hard to imagine if you're not involved in it. Like I said, I literally, I don't think there's one person that spends more time in the Swan River Rink than I have. I've had my kids to every single parent taught since they were, since they could walk. I know how that rink runs. I know the people in it. I know absolutely everything about it. Uh, like I said, there's demand. These kids are driving for one, one hour skates. They're going to Shoal Lake, Brandon, Burden, Dauphin, Winnipeg. For one hour of sleep, they're driving there and back, and they're spending the night, they're staying in hotels. During COVID, they're basically going there and staying in hotels. This stuff is so easy to set up in town. And if you set it up in town, the kids from the local, it'll benefit the local kids, but more local kids will get involved, and then it'll just, it'll, it'll grow. It will. Dolphin charges $150 an hour for their ice year round. Like, I know we're getting, you guys are charging 85 bucks an hour, basically, if we have minor hockey kids for ice time. If you open the ice a few weeks earlier in August and run it till the end of April, charge $130. It, it doesn't matter what you charge, you don't pay it. They will pay it. The, the price you charge isn't important. It'd be good to be a little bit lower than Dauphin, 
because Coffin is a is kind of a competitor. Their ice time is 150. But just an example of Dolphin, 150 dollars of ice uh, per hour for ice. They run four on four every August. There are kids from Swan that go twice a week for the last five years, all of August. And why do they go? Because there's ice in Dolphin. They're going there, they're buying their gas, they're spending their money in Dolphin, their parents are staying there for the day just because there's no ice in Swan. If it was in Swan, it's a four on four. You could literally set that up with your eyes closed. It is, it is so easy to do. The problem is there's no ice to do it. And we could do it for years. It just, you go to Dolphin. And another, just another example of Dolphin, they've now set up a hybrid hockey academy where they're in conjunction with their high school, where you pay $1,800 a year, they don't get school credit for it, but these kids are allowed to leave the high school. They have to pick up a correspondence credit, I think, I believe, or something. Anyways, they go to the rink for this specialized hockey development training that they're running. There's, it, it's big business. It's $2,000 a kid to do it, just, and they get to go twice a week, I think. And as you get to the bigger cities, it's just so much bigger. Like, you're not, sorry, you're with us. It's just basically our families are supporting the city of Dauphin when, if we just have the ice in here, we can stay here and do it ourselves. And like I said, I'm engaged, I am interested in this kind of stuff, and I am looking in one year time, I'd be doing this full time. If I had support from the town, as in just having the ice over, I would put it in the program, I will set it up. And like I said, the kids will come, and like I said, as far as ice rental, I could work with Brendan to, to set all that stuff up. It's 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 really it's really easy to do, believe it or not. But the main thing is our biggest hurdle is the ice isn't open, and during these key times, and this where this is where the kids are getting the majority of their specialized training are on the outsides of the hockey. Anyways, about the end of April, why I want it this way is Gilbert Plains is the only rink that stays open until April. All our AAA extended teams, and there's lots of them, all the park plans for every age group, so they're 2012s, 10s, 11s, all these kids. Everybody practices two or three times in Gilbert Plains. And why do we practice there? Because they're the only place to have the ice. It is literally that simple. If we have the ice, these teams will come and practice here. The other thing, like just the, for the spring, is what I'm talking here, so March, April kind of thing. These are just the examples that would benefit the town. An extended season tournament is basically like having provincials. But the thing about these extended season, they're, they're not for two age groups, they're one birth year, like 2012, and you would get Parkland, Southwest, Interlake, Yellowhead, you have one tournament, one tournament in Swan. Every single hotel would be full. Every restaurant would be full. That is just, and that is one weekend, literally for one extended season tournament. But there's so many more options for this. You, people run spring four and four leagues, adult four and four leagues. You can have goalie schools, heck we can get. How easy it would be to get Jason Argue to come here and if, if he would, he would do cartwheels all the way from off and back to Swan to do it all a goalie school here. And that stuff, that's huge to have that. If Jason Argue has a goalie school, you're going to get goalies from absolutely everywhere, all over the park line. The Paw, they, they will come because everybody knows who he is and his goalie caps are unbelievable. You can apply for senior A provincials. They, they go in, uh, in April. That is axman, basically. You, you just have to apply for it. And it's the same thing. It's basically another provincial tournament for the adult senior rep. That's just a different option. If the ice was in in the spring, every year, that old time tournament would come back. The, the credit union one they used to have, those old time tournaments would come back. The kinsmen would probably possibly move theirs to, to that or two, knowing that the, the, the main thing is everybody's trying to squeeze in their tournaments throughout the year because they know when the stamps lose, the rink closes. But back in the day, they used to keep it open for that old timer tournament. If the ice was open until April, those options are open. And it, it, it's, 
let's, yeah, anyways, hold on. Indigenous tournaments, they happen in the spring every year. They are massive. And like I said, Kenny was supposed to help me when I get a little flustered here, but he had more than me tonight too. So Kenny, when I when I get stuttering, Kenny was gonna straighten it out. <laughs> but he would be, like I said, those indigenous tournaments are huge. And like I said, with these tournaments in the spring, it, these parents and the kids are so desperate for somewhere to play. It doesn't matter where the tournaments are. They, they cannot find enough tournaments to go to. People don't like hosting them. They are, but they're very easy to do. Like, people don't like to do it because all the parents have to get involved and it seems like a big hassle at the end of the hockey season. But for the people that know what they're doing, there's, there's just, it's, there's so much money involved in it, it's ridiculous. Anyways, there's other things like, the other thing we're gonna have to touch on is Stampede Spring Camp, out of town. You put that ice in there, like I said, I've talked to Kramer Colfer, the governor of the Stamps, I've talked to Wolfie, the coach of the Stamps. If you put, if you leave that ice in until the end of April, this spring camp will not be out of town anymore. They will bring it back to town. They will have their camps here, but the problem is the ice isn't here. Anyways, August, the three weeks in August. Oh, I'm doing good. I'm almost there. August. I've got the hook out yet, so you're good. Okay. <laughs> I know it's a lot, so like I said, you stop me at any time. Just the August, which is basically three weeks is all I'm asking. I ran some sort of boot camp, hockey, conditioning camp, a few weeks before snap camp, not conflicting. <laughs> Like I said, ran by them and absolutely agree. The snap camp's more of a fun thing for the kids in town. It's not exactly a hockey development thing. Uh, these these caps, you can bring in 40, 80 kids. Like I said, we have, there's probably 25 kids that go to Yorkton every August for uh, an hour of power skating and an hour of uh, dry land. Five days a week, they do it for one or two weeks. People go there to camp and go to Yorkton and spend their money. It's so easy, you can totally set it up here. No ice to do it. You can run a four and four. The other thing, stamps. Back in the day, they used to have a rookie camp. You get 80 kids here. 80 kids and all the parents come to this rookie camp with chances to maybe go to the main camp. They still have a rookie camp, the stamps. They just don't do it here. Why don't they do it here? They don't do it here because the ice is in. Same thing, I literally went to Kramer Cold Guards last night and I just, the governor of the staff, why don't you have your rookie cap here? Because there's no ice. And then I kind of asked them, why are they asking for it? But anyways, long-term potential of all this leaving this open, this town could support a hockey academy. A hockey academy is basically a school where you would have kids. <laughs> where you could have uh, 40 kids join the Swan Valley School Division, and you would run a hockey academy that would play in the league out of here where they, they could run on the Swan River. There is potential to do that. It's really hard to explain it at the time. There are hockey academies popping up. Jared Jacobson's just hammered one out, and Brandon is building the rink and all that. There's places like Pilot Mound has 450 people. They have a hockey academy there. It is unbelievable to see how they can do that. But like I said, you can bring 40 kids, not from Swan Valley, into this town, into the school division, and do something like that. It's not really, but it's just a long term kind of thing. Anyways, to sum it all up, this was Kenny Monroe's term, and I like it. It's hockey tourism. It's real. There is so much money in it. You will not imagine what people are paying, what, what parents are paying, where parents will travel, what they'll do, just to skate, just having the ice. Especially in August, like I said, we got people taking their cappers out of Wellman Lake and they're driving to Braddon and they're going to stay at Birdsville Park for the week because their kids are going to hockey school and they stay there in a family of five for, for two weeks. Why not have a hockey school here and have people bring their trailers here and go to Wellman and Whitefish and let them actually have a, an experience? You know what I mean? There's a lot you there's a lot you can promote around here. Like 
and the ones that are camping are renting hotels. They're they're going to the, and this is Yorkton, Regina, Winnipeg, Brandon, all stuff that you can do in house with the right people. That, and we have so many skilled people. We have so many ex hockey players. We have so many good coaches. Heck, and like I said, you have the backing of the Stampeders where they have those kids. Wolfie would give us as many players to do whatever we need. They're so helpful, and that's such a big thing for the kids to see. You know, they look up to the junior hockey players in town, and it, it's a big draw having a junior team here. Like, we just take, kind of take it for granted and assume that it's always here. But anyways, and like I said, I wanted to, this hockey tourism and this, how big this development is, and I'm sure none of you guys have been there. If you ever go to Winnipeg and you're in the edge of the city by Oak Bluff, by the perimeter, go to the rink. It is the home of hockey development. It is the most amazing building to walk through. Just walk through it. That's where the WHL team and their uh, MGHL team, the Freeze, play there now. It, what, what if you were organized in a city? I'm not saying anything like that would happen here. Just, it's unbelievable the amount of money that can come in from just hockey development, hockey skills, training, stuff like that. It is big business. And, uh, my other thing just to close is the rink shouldn't open and close. The, the rink shouldn't open when staff, for staff camp and close when the staff's way. The staff peers don't even agree with that. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, it was for, for 20 years, that was the way it was, and everyone accepted it. Times have changed, and it's time to think a little bit outside of the box. There are opportunities there. And like I said, I'd be happy to work with Brendan just it's like, can I guarantee you 100 hours of rented ice though? But I'm just one guy and I know how many hours I can do it. We can, we can start small, but it, it's only going to get bigger. But the main thing is we need a commitment from the town saying the rink is going to be open here. It's going to close here on a more consistent basis. Yeah, and, hey, let's hope the stats make it to the third round here for the finals and we can keep it open until May. That was great here. That was awesome. But, uh, yeah, like I said, we're, we're a, we have a dedicated local hockey community. And hockey is year-round in a lot of places. I don't believe in that. I believe there needs to be a break in the summer, but stretching it out for another six to seven weeks when parents are going to leave in this town like you wouldn't believe and spending money like you wouldn't believe when you can do it in-house for the most part, I think it makes sense. But that's, like I said, Living in Swan River shouldn't be a disadvantage for the kids. They should have the same opportunities as the people in the city. It's a win-win. Benefits the kids, Cal, Valley, and uh, yeah. I, I was gonna hand these out, but I can you can pass them around at the end. Just some little clip notes you can look at them that they gave before. I don't have anything else to say. And like I said, if anybody wants to talk off the record, I left my number there. You can call me anytime. Kenny told me I should hobnob with you guys before the meeting, but uh, I don't like bugging people on your, I don't like people bugging me on my work hours, so I kind of just figured I'd throw this info on my And like I said, I, that is a lot. And if you don't go to the rink and you don't realize what's going on, and a lot of people are just minor hockey, but there there is skill development and stuff like that. Is it, it's big business, and I approve. I just cannot see why it wouldn't benefit around here. So like I said, August until the end of April, or longer until the stamps made. And like I said, the stamps alone, and more, like one tournament, it, it wouldn't take long. Like, would it happen in the first year? I'm not going to guarantee and tell you guys how I'm going to bring a tournament here in the first year. But once it's as we set a precedent that this is when the rink's open, and that's, like I said, you just close your eyes, you go to Gilbert Plank until the end of April, everybody knows it's open. So it's, it's that easy, and look, Swan could be that place, but so much, we can make it so much bigger. Anyways, that's it for me. Questions? Okay, well, good presentation, and uh, we'll take any questions from any members of council. Council Morials first. A couple questions. Um, first off, I'm encouraged with what I heard, and I like what you're saying. Um, and I just want to confirm that I heard right, because it cut in and out there, but you said you can't guarantee the hours that you'd be requiring in August and April? This August, 
I wouldn't be able to because basically these 30 to 40 families, we've already, they've already booked their, they've already booked the caps and stuff. They're already signed up for them. It, it, it just can't be done overnight. It would be more into the spring, but like I said, if that rink opens three weeks earlier in August, I will put program in there. If I have enough time to sneak a hockey school in there, I will. If I give, and like I said, there'll be still development, there'll be four on four, an actual amount of hours. Uh, like I said, I don't, and I'm only one person. I'm not, I'm not saying I'd be the only one in the ice. And especially after a COVID year, it would be good business to open it up and maybe have some public skating and get repaired pot skates in the morning again. That's important stuff for people that couldn't go anywhere. And like if things kind of clear up, like that kind of thing. I know it's not a money maker, but it's kind of a kind of a mental health thing. It's good. For the discussion. Okay. It's a same, sorry. Okay, and then the same question. Um, you gotta try that again. We're not hearing yet. No, we've lost connection there. How about now? Barely. Okay, uh, my second question, if you guys can hear me, yeah. was uh, there was a lot of events there that uh, Mr. Anderson was talking about. Who is going to be organizing that? Or would it be up to those individual groups if there is? Uh, do you mean like the hockey development side or the tournaments or what, what are we talking here? Like, yeah, like all those other... Um, the activities, like you said, like the tournaments, um, the seniors tournament, all that stuff. Like, uh, is that separate groups, or would that be up to our recreation department to organize all that? You could probably, I like, could probably work a little bit with Brendan on that kind of stuff. But as far as tournaments and stuff, like the old time tournaments or whatever, even like a kids tournament stuff like that, that'd be organized by different groups. As far as senior A provincials, that is just uh, like that'd be something I'd apply for. I play for the accident. But as far as the hockey development and uh, any of those type of programs, I'd implement them myself. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Councilor Delorier. Um, just a comment. I, you know, I, I recognize your passion for it. It's, you made a good pre presentation. It, it, uh, you, you bring a lot of uh, things that you might not think about if you don't live in that world. Um, but one, one of the concerns I have is more of a technical uh, question for Brennan and our Mr. Fedorchuk, and I don't necessarily expect an answer tonight, but a lot of times we have a hard time getting the ice in for August, end of August just due to the heat. And so I think you know, I'm, I'm sure coming out of this, their uh, administration will provide us with a report on what that what it might cost to add on the three weeks in August and the four weeks in April. At least that all that's what I'll be looking for. But in addition to what the financial impacts are, what whether whether we can even get the ice in much earlier than we do in August, especially with the retrofits we had to do two years ago, I, that that's kind of a question mark outside of the of the cost of, of operating the ice longer. But is it even possible? Because I know some years it's it's hard to get in there, and I don't expect an answer tonight. But again, I just want to thank you for your presentation and leave that with administration um, as far as what I'd be looking for before we can make a decision on those two things. So, I'm just uh, Eric Fool's a wizard. He gets that. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him in there, I've seen him work. And like I said, the main, the main reason why they didn't used to put it in at the start of August, if you guys didn't know, it was Roy Adams. Can't put the ice in. Roll your gaps. Can't put the ice. Well, guess what? There's no more. There's no more uh, concrete in there no more, and that's not no longer an option. And like I said, it, that new retro, like I like what you guys did there. Is she did what you had to do, and it seems to be a lot more efficient. I don't know how long it will last, but let's hope it lasts a long time. And uh, yeah, it all it can be just as hot at the end of end of August as it is at the start. Everybody knows that, but. Anyways. Okay. Well, thank you. We'll 
Yes. Okay, thanks, you. everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you passed that on to Jim? Yeah. Oh, what? Nice day to see you. Bye, y'all. Um. Oh, sorry. Bye. Bye, <laughs> Bye I'll see you. Okay, so moving on, uh, six communications. Resolve the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020 be received. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Anything on that, Councilor Delorier? I wasn't able to attend the uh, presentation. Councilor Tony went to, to this, uh, this presentation with the auditor, so I can try to answer any questions if there are. But Anything? Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.2 Result the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy 2021 budget be accepted as received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? I guess that um, Councillor Wintoni is not here. I, I've been stepping into RISE, and uh, this budget was discussed at a quite lengthy time and uh, was passed. Our levies have changed slightly because of what our commitments were in that uh, four year period, I believe it was four years. Uh, Mountain is still not entered into uh, or come back into rise, which um, they are continuing to uh, encourage or, or lobby uh, Mountain to come back to uh, rise. Um, they'll continue the EDO, I guess you could say. She is uh, working on a lot of different projects as far as uh, what they can encourage business or, or buy business. If it's um, tourism or uh, any other thing that she can big business uh, she's trying to turn over a lot of rocks everywhere she possibly can and she's been working with a lot of the uh, EDOs from down to southern Manitoba in particular uh, uh, Portia Prairie who have been very successful Morton Winkler as well so uh, she's uh, working on things and she's still quite new at the job but uh, I think uh, if she's given the, um, you know, the leverage to move ahead then hopefully we can see some traction with that. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 6.3 Result of buildings permits 24 21 through 29 21 with the total estimated value of $22,240 be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 7.1. Result of the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Morio? No? Okay. Uh, Councillor Delorier. Um, question regarding uh, uh, our process with. Uh, the garbage truck and the half done following behind. I know we talked about this once before, probably prior to you assuming your role, um, but uh, we know that there's other municipalities that aren't doing that right now, and, and what are the rules surrounding that? Do, is that a practice we have to continue? And and because I, I know from one far not doing that practice, but what are the rules surrounding that? I don't expect an answer right now, but I know we, we were going to look into that. If you, if you have looked into it, that's fine, but I don't want to put you on the spot on that. That's something we implemented just to try and space guys out, uh, and sort of limit the contact where there's three guys right next to each other, shoulder to shoulder. Uh, so with the mass on, like it could be in the truck, but we just implemented that. Uh, back at the last fall, I believe it was brought back, and that 
um, just to try and spread guys out as much as possible. Um, what, what is our policy on the guys? In the because the usually it's the one guy in the guard truck, two guys in the half ton. Are they to be wearing masks in the half ton? If there's more than one person in a truck, they've been told and reminded to that they need to have their masks on. And that, that's not limited to the garbage truck. That's uh, all employees. So if I'm with someone, okay. I've got my mask on, and the other guy there has mask on too. Okay. Thank you. Um, in regards to uh, not the garbage truck, but like with the, the COVID, uh, can we have administration along with uh, our safety uh, personnel there checking to see what the uh, options are and if what, once our staff is fully vaccinated with their second uh, dose and if there's areas where we could potentially relax if they're fully vaccinated, if that's a possibility. Yeah, we can definitely look into that. Council Friesen. Do we know if they're putting up Brad pictures on the Instagram? They are, yeah. I've talked to uh, Kirsten Glenn uh, with the high school, and she's going to get me a date of when they plan to have those ready. Okay, so we don't know. When. They are planning to do it, but. but we don't know when. Yeah, she's planning on it. Or she's going to contact me with a date of when they're going to. Do you think it might be soon? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's coming up relatively soon. The reason I'm asking is the hanging plants. We just thought if the guys were out hanging stuff, they were going to be hanging the plants while we're doing it. So yeah. if you could let me know as soon as you know, that'd be okay, for sure. sure. And has anyone had calls about the abundance of daddy lines? Every year, every spring. Not much we can do about it, right? We can't spray them with anything because it's illegal. Well, we can. We tried with the we approved list, but they, it just doesn't work. So <laughs> I'll pass that along. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Other reports? Council reports. Uh, Councilor Friesen. Uh. A uh, cemetery meeting um, last week with uh, Mr. Harvey and Mr. Newland and we had John Valley West rep, Mr. Pierpont was there, and Gordon Bell. Then we just kind of wandered around and discussed how we could uh, make some improvements and uh, perhaps get some headstones leveled and uh, talked about how we're going to do the cleanup in before October. Everyone remove their uh, ornamental lights, etc., that are in the ground because they freeze in the ground in the winter and then they get broken. So uh, we're going to have to let it be known that anything that's stuck in the ground is got to be removed in October and can be brought back in May. And uh, I believe Mr. Harvey was going to check with uh, a Lions member to see if. They were still wanting to help us get some graves level. Yeah, I reached out to him and I was waiting to hear back because he was going to talk to the president. Okay. And um, uh, Community Secure, Care, they have a, an initiative out there right now and it's called Community Safety Net and it's for kids. You get safe in Swan between the ages of 10 and 13. So, if you want more information on that, um, you can talk to me or talk to Lorianne and you know, she uh, knows all about it. And Lana is um, talking about July 1st because we're not having a picnic in the park, but we are going to have the extra high fireworks, so there's going to have to be a perimeter set up. And cars are going to be parked in the street and parking lots, etc., etc. And she's talked to Star Cinema, who's going to supply popcorn, and wants the counselors to go around and give out popcorn to the people who have come to watch the fireworks. And I said, Good luck with getting all of the counselors, because I know some of them can make. And so keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, 
shall we really do it? Any questions about that? Could be the CAO too, doesn't have to be counselors. Thanks. Is that everything? No. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Morial. Um, all I had was the uh, one meeting with uh, purchase service negotiations with Swan Valley West that we talked about at last week's cow meeting. And since I'm not in town, that's all I had. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Deloria. Um, the Councillor Morio, we had the purchase service uh, meeting that we'll report on in, in camera. We'll, uh, we'll discuss some of the outcomes of the, from that in camera. Um, I also had a uh, library board meeting last week. We were presented with the uh, audited financial statements from 2020 from Pasquale Hardy Company. Um, so I'll be, I'll be getting a copy of the audited financial statements to Mr. Canita right shortly here. And then we'll be seeing, uh, seeing that come to our probably our next meeting here. Um, other than that, the library is still doing curbside, curbside pickup and delivery. They are closed as far as public going in the building, but you can still get books and things of that nature. Anything that they lend out, they'll bring it out to your car. So they're still open, so to speak, and they're, they're actually fairly busy with, uh, with uh, not being open as far as the building. And that is it for me. Uh, I missed the last uh, shared services uh, with Swan Valley West, but we had a good contingent there and then we've heard what their uh, motions are to move forward, so we'll be scheduling a meeting with them again, uh, kind of on our third wave of discussion. Um, the uh, next week we'll be meeting with um, uh, Mitchell's Bozeman to discuss that as well. And also uh, I'm having a meeting with um, our first meeting in a long time actually, the Swan Valley Health Facilities Foundation, where we've received the check for $15,000 from the 4-H group uh, towards the CT scan. So that will be presented uh, that night, on Monday, June the 7th. And so we'll continue on with lobbying the minister on, on that and hopefully we uh, get some traction there soon because, and I, and I will say that the minister who is right now on leave has said that uh, she will meet with us and, and that will, meeting will come, but like I said, she is actually on leave right now. So hopefully when she's feeling better and gets back to uh, the house, or the, uh, yeah, I guess the house, um, we'll have a chance to have a chat with her. And lastly, I guess I want to say, um, I, today, I, I, or every day, I'm, lately I've been wearing this ribbon and I had Councillor uh, Friesen bring this uh, orange, uh, shirt here in remembrance and respect of, of the people who have lost their lives in residential schools and uh, and in respect to the families of such a, a tragic events that have scarred our, our country and uh, it's such a, a difficult thing to even to comprehend and uh, I certainly hope we all have the strength and figure out some way how to continue on with this because it's, it is a, a horrific uh, event and like I said has scarred our our country in, in such a negative way but good good somehow comes out of things and, and I don't know how that will be but eventually in time you know people will heal but I think it's important for us to recognize what has happened in light of uh, the news from Kamloops this past weekend and, and we move on in, uh, in this journey that we're dealing with so anything from the CAO uh, just to update council, and I'll have a written report at the next meeting. But uh, uh, I'll have to add personnel uh, dealings to in camera just to update council. And uh, any councillors want to sign up for the June AMM registrations? I know I have Councillor Friesen and Mayor Jacobson signed up, but uh, that's out there as well. Just let me know. Uh, and yeah, just had a couple of meetings with the senior elections official on getting the voters list done up for the by-election. So that uh, is going to go off seamless. And I'll be scheduling an airport meeting to get the tanks and card lock project underway. And I guess council should know I'm having a, a hard time contacting Brian Ronick regarding the recreation lawsuit. 
So I know it's been weeks since he's been out of trial, but uh, I've left a few messages without any contact back. So just to let you know, I'm still trying, but I haven't heard anything back from his office. It's been a few weeks. But I'll continue to try. And again, you'll see the Main Street proposal in, in Canada that I mentioned. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Moving on, eight uh, for new business. Um, I, for somehow I missed eight point one. I, I don't know. I, I said earlier that we weren't going to have this, and, and I I don't know how I missed it on the agenda. It is on the agenda, so um, we don't have to take put it on the table. Yeah, that will come from me. That will come from another member of, of the council. So since it is on the agenda, then I will bring it forward. Uh, so. Result of conditional use 1 2021 to allow a retail business in R5 zone, specifically on lot 4, plan 1913 be approved. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion. Councillor Delorier? You know, I've, I heard. You know, we haven't had a conditional use hearing this large in probably a number of years. Um, and I guess to me, the, uh, the I guess before I go on, was there any written submissions? No. no. So most of the concerns I heard were traffic related and, and quality of life related. And, and I, I think it's important to, to recognize that, that that is a residential area and I, I think I would like to um, move the table this to another meeting just so I can put some thought, you know, it's all fresh in your mind. I think we need to put, I would at least like to think of, put some thought into, is there a possible way that we can, you know, I know I know, you, if you came on the, to this job wanting to make everybody happy, you're going to fail, but at least we can find some sort of a balance because I do agree that, that having an empty building, um, you know, it's been empty for a year now. An empty building is never good as far as even, you know, it was brought up about, crime and that related things well that an empty building is, is sure to attract crime so having having a uh, being able to have that building move on into some sort of have some sort of future i think it would be ideal but i think we need to weigh that against the uh the concerns that we heard from the, from the neighbors so i think i'd like to table make a motion to table this so we put some thought around possible conditions that Second. might might uh provide that balance Second motion is, uh Council Friesen. I agree totally because I, this is all new tonight and I didn't get my head around it too. I'm on their side and I'm on their side and I just don't know where it happens. All in favor? Okay, it's the table. 8.2 Result the Director of Public Works be authorized to begin the process of installing a permanent generator with an auto transfer switch at the water treatment plant. Moved by Councillor Delorier, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor uh, Morio. Uh, Mr. Harvey, uh, what timeline are you looking or potentially thinking that this project could take? Would it be potentially completed this year or next year? It would be next year because of the budget, like it's a substantial cost, but uh, we can get the uh, consultants looking at the load and getting everything ready so that next year uh, we can have that in the budget and get it ready to go in as soon as possible kind of thing. Like have everything ready to go so that uh, there's not a big delay on getting it going in the new year. Okay, perfect. So getting all the legwork done now for early next year. Sounds good. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? This is carried. Uh, Councilor Morial, so I know that your video is a little bit behind and uh, you voted, I know it, maybe your vote came la later, but we know that you were in favor, so uh, yes. <clears throat> 9.1, resulted the 2021 Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy Levy 
in the amount of $47,329.55 be approved for payment once the audited financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2020 have been received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. 10.1. Resolve, resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 27595 to number 27645, totaling $277,237.61 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 4861 to 4869, totaling $78,612.37 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposits totaling $600 as listed on Schedule C, and direct deposits in the amount of $272,273 as per Schedule D. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Morio. Discussion? Councillor Delorier. Um, 27598, Associated Engineering for. Uh the, in the explanation it says detailed design for the water plant, but that, that can't be all, is that just a progress payment or just the final payment? Because that can't be all the cost. Yeah, that was a progress payment. Yeah, that's because uh, Water Services Board is paying for it. Okay. And that's also, uh, that's what's on the invoice. So Associated never changed projects when it's into construction. They're still they're still accounting their hours to the detailed design because if they start a new project, we get charged four thousand dollars. Oh, okay. I'm guessing that's it. That's it as well. Further discussion. All in favor? Opposed. It's carried. Ten point two. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provide that a municipality may impose supplementary taxes and subsections 306.1 provides that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations from Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations made by Manitoba Assessment Services on May 25, 2021 be made to the 2021 business tax roll with the resulting increase being $149.63 and the resulting reduction being $107.73. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Let's carry. 11, 11.1. Resolved bylaw 7, 2021, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to establish a landfill capital and closure reserve fund, be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? That's recorded vote. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved bylaw 8, 2021, being a bylaw for elections and campaign expense and contributions bylaw be read a second time. Moved by Councilor Friesen, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Almost didn't have a, a by election there for a minute. <laughs> Resolved that bylaw 8, 2021, being a bylaw for elections, campaign expenses, and contributions be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councilor Delorier, second by Councilor Morio. Discussion? Recorded vote. All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved that pursuant to sections 152 3 of the Municipal Act, Council go to committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussions are shared services, Main Street West, and personnel. Moved by Councilor Friesen, second by Councilor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? Carry. I think we need to go.
resolved that this regular meeting with council now be adjourned at 9 30 p.m moved by councillor friesen second by we got to go more camera first we did Sorry, Sorry. Uh, seconded by Councilor Morio. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. We're adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Good.